The first thing you need to consider whenever you design a brochure is what kind of brochure you want to create. Just doing a quick, simple Pinterest search yields a variety of different sizes, shapes, folds, and different ways of just producing it. So it can be very overwhelming. For this project, we're going to create just a simple four panel brochure. And in this video, I want to show you different ways you can set up your own template or use templates that are given to you. The first thing to understand is how you want your template to be folded. I found this example online that shows some of the most common different ways that a printer might be able to cut and fold your paper. Again, this is going to depend on the size of paper you have and also the thickness of the paper. Some thicker papers are more difficult to fold, especially if you've got multiple compound folds within one specific design. The most common ones are half folds and tri-folds, and then things that are called double folds or gate folds. A half fold simply folds your paper in half, either from the top or the right or left edge. Trifolds are what we're mostly concerned with or mostly see whenever you do a brochure. These are the three panel brochures that have the edges folding in, or if they were a Z fold, it has one edge folding under while the other one folds on top. Parallel and gate folds allow you to fold into four different panels, sometimes even folding it multiple times, but this gives you four different ones either folded on top of themselves or having the right and left side folding in. Regardless of the style that you want to choose, you need to make sure that you can print off a test copy, fold it down, and make sure everything fits and flows nicely. You want to be able to have your design reveal itself as if it's telling a story, starting with the front panel, then as you open it up into all of the subsequent panels, and even the back of your design can be designed as well. The other reason why you want to be able to print off a test copy is because some of these panels aren't intuitive on your screen as to what would be the first, second, or third. So it's very helpful to give yourself a good idea of marking up exactly what will be seen and in what order everything will be worked in. To get started on finding and using different kinds of brochures, contact your printer. Very often, especially if it's an online printer, they'll provide you with templates that are necessary. This is vistaprint.com. Vistaprint does a wide variety of different kinds of brochures, and you can see here they've got bifold, trifold, z folds, different stocks of paper, and also at a variety of different sizes. Somewhere on these websites, you can look for the word download templates, or sometimes they'll provide it for you after you upload your design. In this case, if I click on it, I can download either a Photoshop or an Illustrator template in a variety of different sizes and different kinds of folds. So either one of these would be a good starting point. Even though it's in Illustrator or Photoshop, you should be able to use this artwork and import it into InDesign and use that as a starting point as well. What I'm going to do in just a moment is show you how to set this up in InDesign from scratch, or at least from the, some of the given specs from another printer. Another thing you can do is to go to a print shop that allows you to type in the exact specifications that you need. So this is Holland Lithographics in, uh, based in Michigan. They've got an online tool that allows you to type in the exact specs that you need for your project. In this project, we're going to be creating a four panel gate fold. So I'm going to select it and go to the next page. And then from here, I can type in the type of paper, the height and the width of our paper as well. Text weight paper tends to be very thin, and it's usually what we associate with regular typing paper. Cover weight, on the other hand, tends to be much thicker. It tends to be the kind of thing that we would call cardstock or something that feels much more heavier. If you're ever doing a brochure, keep in mind that most people want to be able to move these around, hold them, fold them, and unfold them. They need to be made very durable. So typically, brochures are made on cover weight. However, text weight tends to be much cheaper and more easily to, pr to produce. So if you're on a budget, text weight is what I would choose. For this particular project, I'm simply going to type in a regular letter-sized sheet of paper. So I'm going to make the width of it be 11 and the height of it be 8.5. And, and you can choose whatever points or inches or picas to work from. 
For this, we want to know the size of it. In this case, once it's been folded up, not necessarily the flat piece prior to, um, to folding. So I'm going to change it over to flat. And then finally, the number of panels that we need will be kept with before. We'll say next. And this is going to give us the dimensions of our entire piece once it's set up. And then also all of the panels that are inside of it. One thing I want to point out is that each of these panel widths is slightly different from the other. I'm not simply dividing up a 11 inch piece of paper into four panels or into three different alignments. They need to be offset just a bit in order to give your fold the ability to fold down flat without having any kind of kink or crease along the edges. If it was folded perfectly, then it wouldn't line up at all. So I'm going to take a screenshot of just this particular part and we'll jump into InDesign and set up our document so that we can use these in just a moment. Jumping into InDesign, let's go up to File and Create a New Document. And let's pay attention to the size of our document and also the number of columns we want to divide this up in. I'm going to change my units of measure over to inches and type in 11 by 8.5 for our width and our height. Remember, this is set to be a landscape orientation. Since we have a front and a back, we need it to be two pages. Oops. And we're going to turn off facing pages simply because this isn't going to be a book style layout. Now, the number of columns that we have is going to represent the number of panels that we need. In our case, it's going to be four columns, and so we have four panels to work in. The gutter needs to match the amount of margin that we're going to place around our entire document. And here's what to think about. If I've got a gutter that's going to be splitting the difference between two different panels, I need my margins to be twice, or excuse me, half the size as my gutter. This is going to make sense in just a second. So for instance, if I set my margins to be a quarter of an inch, 0.25 on all sides, my gutter needs to be half of an inch, 0.5. This way, the gutter between the two columns is going to be split to a quarter of an inch. And we won't worry about the bleed and slug just for now. We'll say Create, and this will give us our new document to work in. The next thing we need to do is I'm going to drag this screenshot of my information onto my layer. We'll place it here, and I'm going to keep it here as a quick way to make reference to where each of my panels needs to be. When measuring off the panels, they're measured from the left to the right. So the first one will be this one at the top, second, third, and fourth, all the way down. The first thing I need to do is to make sure my rulers are turned on. If you don't see them, you can go up to View, down to Show Rulers. The second thing I need to do is to go to your Grids and Guides and turn off Snap to Guides. This will make it much easier to place your guides right where you need them to be. To easily create a vertical guide, you'll click on your ruler and drag over, and you'll notice that there's an X coordinate that follows your cursor as you place it. Now, depending on how far you've zoomed in or out, you can get more precision detail about exactly where to place this. If you accidentally let go, you can always click on your guides and reposition it wherever you need it to be. For instance, this left panel needs to be set at 2.703 inches. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit more to give myself some workroom. Carefully click on that guide and drag it over till I get as close to 2.703 as possible. Now in this case, notice that it's off by two thousandths of an inch. And for what we're doing, that's going to get it pretty close. So I'm actually okay with keeping it at 2.705. From here, we need to measure the second margin panel from the original one. To do this, we need to change the origin point for our rulers. Notice that the origin point is set at the top left-hand corner. If you carefully click where the two rulers intersect, you can realign the origin point to anywhere you need it to be. And in our case, we're going to realign it to that guideline that we created. When I drag over, now notice that the zero origin point for our x-axis has been realigned there. And so the next time I create a panel, 2.797, I can drag over and place it exactly where it needs to be based on that new one, which will be right there. 
So I'm going to repeat this process for the other two panels. 2.797 from there. So I'm going to click on the top left corner where our rulers meet, drag it to the new guideline, and then click on our guides and drag it over to here too. 2.795 is close enough for that. And then the final one will actually be the edge of our panel that we work on with that. From here, we can get rid of our guidelines because we won't need it. But you can see on the blue lines that those are now divided into the appropriate size of panels. What we want to do now is to realign our margins within our columns so that they straddle the middle portion of each of the different fold lines. Here's the trick that I use in order to get this to be set up perfectly. I'm going to zoom in and let's go to this left hand side margin. I'm going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to create a rectangle that's the exact same width as the gutter within this panel. So I'm going to click and drag until it lines up perfectly inside of there. You can see based on the little X going through it that it's not perfectly centered inside of that area. So I'm going to fill it in so I can see it and I'm going to nudge it over until the center point lines up perfectly with the center of that margin. Next, let's move over our gutter. Going up to view, go down to your guides, and this is where you can uncheck lock column guides. This will allow you to select the edge of a column and then drag it over until it snaps nicely to the inside of there. Let's do the same for the center. We'll take our, our square and zoom in. And I can tell you since we're folding it in half, that one should be perfectly aligned, which it is, so there's nothing that needs to be done for this one. But let's go over to our right hand side and again get your square and align it to inside of there. Then we're going to simply nudge it over until it fits perfectly inside of that area. Then you can click on the edge of your column and drag it until it's readjusted to the size of your box. Now when we zoom out we've got our four different panels nice and created so that they are fit within this area. Now that we've done this for the first page, it's a simple matter of repeating that process for the second page. Also keep in mind, since this is a symmetrical design, the first and the second page should be exactly the same. But if you've got something like a trifold or a more complex fold, your different pages are going to be set up slightly differently. So taking some time right now, I'm going to realign all of these and then we'll move forward with our design. Now that I've finished setting up both of my pages, we can go and save our InDesign file. File and Save As. I'm going to call it a four panel gatefold. And I'm going to keep this on hand in case I need to use a four panel gatefold in the future. It's a good idea to have these set up and ready to go for any future kind of designs that you may need. Just keep in mind, you need to recreate each one of these depending on the size of your document, the type of paper you're using, and the type of folds that you're going to be working with.